Hi, my name is Erfan. I'm a lead software engineer at Devs Graphics Programming. In this lightning talk, I'm going over on how we keep our staging buffer fixed size, why we do it, and get into more details as we go forward. First, let's talk about what is a staging buffer. Well, it helps with transferring data from CPU to GPU and vice versa. It helps consumer of the data get in the most convenient location for read access. And obviously, all staging buffers need to be host visible because the CPU either needs to write to it or read from it. And our design choice was for uploading resources to GPU, the staging buffer is usually used to transfer data to device local memory, which is not host visible. Because host visible and device local is a very limited resource if it's present at all. I will not cover rebar, which is available on recent GPUs, which can make the entire pool of VRAM accessible from the CPU. Also note for unified memory architectures and mobile devices, uh, obviously you, you may not incur any penalties from your final buffer leaving over hosts flags, uh, you can stream right into that, but Vulkan image layouts are not a standardized, so you still need to stage images, meaning you need to copy to a VK buffer and then to a VK image. Now let's get into more details about transferring data to or from the GPU and how we approach it in Nabla. Nabla is our open, open source framework for GPGPU with a focus on computer graphics. Our system is deterministic and we won't have to deal with memory slugs and growing shrinking memory and that comes naturally with our staging buffer being fixed size. Our system can push arbitrary sized image copies across with arbitrary raw and slice alignments and the image can be way larger than our staging memory. We take advantage of certain device properties provided by welcome physical device queries uh, that hopefully makes our transfer more optimal. And we also respect the Vulkan specification regarding limits on copying buffers and images and mapping memory. Our interesting feature in the system is color format conversion while streaming. That is intended for formats loaded into CPU not supported by the GPU. There are such three channel formats which most GPUs don't support for sampling in your shaders. Uh, this way we don't have to convert the whole resource at once and then attempt at uploading it. Instead, we convert the format while copying from the loaded image into a staging memory. We work with our staging memory or buffer using a transient data streaming buffer. What this tool does for us is that it combines the general purpose allocator with the staging memory so that you could allocate blocks within your staging memory. The allocations are deferred using a deferred event handler as it prevents dropping the allocation when the transfer is in progress. The events can hold on to ref counted objects until they are processed and also our command buffers Resources, so we make sure uh, we don't free resources using pending or future submissions. Our transient data stream buffer has a function called call freeze, which simply put will pull the events and free the allocations if the events have happened. And this tool is thread safe, noting that we may use a circular buffer instead of a general purpose allocator if there was only one timeline. Let's look at a simplified version of our upload loop now. We will first try to allocate from our transient streaming buffer. The allocator gives us a conservative guess of how much space we can hope for with its maximum possible allocation size. You can see it in the code. Um, if the allocation was successful, we proceed into copying the data user has provided into a staging memory and issue a copy buffer or copy buffer to image. Notice that these are commands being recorded, which need to be submitted to a queue and we request a deferred deallocation latched on a fence, which will be signaled by a future submit. Now, if the allocation was unsuccessful, we simply submit everything recorded so far and we make sure uploads of our finished by waiting for the fence. Then we call our call freeze function. Notice that this should be called after the wait for the fence and before the reset fence. We now simply reset our fence and begin our command buffer to continue recording copies or uploads until the job is finished. Notice that we won't submit the last batch of copies. Note that downloading resources from the GPU is a bit different. The event handler takes the Lambda as a callback to consume the data before it is freed. What you saw in the previous slide was auto submission on overflow. Let's look at a few details. As you may have already guessed, a single resource copy may consist of multiple queue submissions. This can be due to many reasons. The resource may be too big for the staging memory or maybe the staging memory is fragmented or currently in use. It does not matter. The user does not need to care about how many submissions are necessary and here is how submissions are transparent in our tool. For first, they tell us what submit info they would use assuming there would be no overflow. The final submission is not our responsibility. 
but we modified to take the following notes into account. Waiting for any sum of words must happen on the first submission only. And signaling any sum of words must happen on the last submission only, which is user's responsibility. And also, a few notes for the command buffer, it needs to be resettable, meaning it should be individually resettable separate from the command pool, because it will need to reset in the case of implicit auto submission. Also, it needs to begin with one time submit flag because the recorded commands are invalid for reuse. One of the issues we currently have with binary semaphores and fences is that the deferred event handler will suffer a loss wake up if a fence is reset by user before it is pulled, meaning the fence would be in an unsignaled state again and it will be inter interpreted as copy currently in progress or will be pending in near future. With timeline semaphores, we know the event has happened by using VK wait semaphores, which waits for timeline semaphores on the host and using a reference value when we submitted the copy. We have other similar systems in Nabla, such as probably pools, uh, which you can think of as GPU ECS. Our property pools follows the same pattern with regards to auto submission and transient data streaming buffer. The only difference is using a compute shader to write the data instead of a command buffer command with an additional index buffer. Thank you. Any questions?